So I started out uh, thinking I would do a video to demonstrate a ground fault circuit interrupter or a GFCI outlet, but um, unfortunately, someone else has other ideas. Supervisor is watching. Ah, just get your nose out of the camera. This is what it's like trying to work with one of these things around. It just wants to be the center of attention constantly. What is a GFCI? A GFCI is a ground fault circuit interrupter. And they're required to make your outlets, at least in North America, to code if they are in areas that could be exposed to moisture. So I know in different jurisdictions the code changes, so what I'm telling you here may not apply to your code. In some countries, GFCI are equivalent of a GFCI is required on every circuit, especially in Europe. But in North America, at least in my jurisdiction here, it's required on any outlet that's either outdoors or in a bathroom or in any proximity to where water may be a factor, such as aquariums. Many people didn't notice it, know this, but aquariums are supposed to be protected by a GFCI because you have pumps and you have lights and stuff in proximity to water. Um, and same with uh, outlets in laundry rooms and stuff where there's a laundry tub that's within reach where you could actually touch the outlet and make contact with something else that, that is containing water. So laundry rooms, they're also supposed to be protected. But uh, regular outlets, they're not required. What a GFCI does is a GFCI will open the circuit if, if there's more than between four and six milliamps of current that is going somewhere other than where it is supposed to. So in your normal load, so here's your, here's your, I'm going to draw my crude drawing here of the, uh, the pole with the insulator and the, 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 the high tension wire that's bringing service to your house and you've got a transformer mounted on the pole with the good old fuse cutout with the little door here and so forth and you got your your hot wire going into the fuse and then the other side of the fuse is going into the transformer primary and then it comes out of the transformer primary where it's connected to the neutral and it's that's also connected to a ground rod and then you've got your three outputs this is again for North America neutral is bonded and then you've got your your two lines one is connected to one line and the other one is connected to the other line and these these go to your home now in your house in North America you have 240 volts between the two phases between these two phases and you have 120 between either phase and neutral. So we'll just pick on this one and that one. But it's also the same for between that one and that one. In your outlet in your house, your plug is wired up. We'll draw the neutral here. Here's our here's our GFCI plug. So you have the neutral prong and then of course you've got your little reset buttons here and so forth, right? I guess I didn't draw this to scale. Anyway, you've got your neutral going to one side and you've got your hot going to the other side and then you've got your ground going to ground. In a GFCI plug or breaker, because some people will have it as a breaker in the main panel, which will protect every outlet on that circuit, but on your GFC outlet, which is what we are gonna demonstrate, we're gonna demonstrate it using this GFCI, which is my GFCI that I use in the, in the workshop here. Um, we're going to demonstrate it with that one. But you can have a full load of 15 amps of current going from load. Full load. All the current is leaving the hot and it's all returning through the neutral. And the GFCI will not trip. But if there is any leakage here to ground and that leakage exceeds between four and six milliamps, it's going to trip the breaker. It's going to trip the internal GFCI breaker. 
when you press the test button, what you are in effect doing is providing about a 22K ohm resistor between the hot side and the ground. So when you press the test button, this is how you test to make sure your outlet works. Now, some of these are different. Some will have a red light that lights up when it's in a trip condition, and others will have a light that illuminates, in this case it's green, when the outlet is working. So when I trip it, it will turn the light out, and then I can reset it. It's a funny story how I ended up with this outlet in this box, because this outlet... Now, now you see I've got a story about an incompetent electrician. When my house was built, this outlet was installed on an outdoor outlet. And there was one outlet that was downstream from it, at the, on, on, the, on another wall, on the back of the house. And when I was putting an addition on the house, the electrician comes along and he's uh, putting in the wiring for the new addition. And what used to be an outside wall that was the secondary outlet protected by this plug was now going to be an inside outlet, which did not need to be GFCI protected. So what, uh, what my brain-dead electrician, who obviously didn't uh, know that there were different brands of plugs out there, uh, he goes to rewire this outlet so that it's only going to protect the local outlet so that the circuit downstream that's now going to feed an indoor plug is not protected by a GFCI that's outside because the last thing you want is to have a nuisance trip and have an outlet go off inside the house. For me it wouldn't matter because I knew that the outlet outside, I, I would have known that the outlet on that wall was protected by a GFCI so if it didn't work I'd be going outside checking it. So to me it really didn't matter. But that, that, that run was then going to be used to power up uh, two more plugs outside. So his idea was that he would put another GFCI on the other plugs. He wanted to sell me GFCI plugs is what he wanted to do because these things are relatively expensive. You know, they're not your they're not your run of the mill like one dollar outlet like this. These things here are more like about forty dollars or thirty five dollars or whatever the heck they are, but they're more expensive. Anyway, my rocket scientist electrician that had been hired by the general contractor that was putting an addition, addition on my house uh, about uh, 12 years ago, I guess. He goes out and he see, he's going to rewire the plug. And he sees, oh, the light's on. And he goes, they won't reset. What the hell? Oh, this must be defective. So he takes the plug out and he puts a new one in and he charges me for an extra plug. And I actually got in an argument with not only him, but I got in an argument with the general contractor because the electrician was arguing that my plug was defective, that it wouldn't reset. What dumbass didn't realize was that the brand that he sells has a red light. And guess what? The red light comes on when it's tripped to indicate that it's, that it's tripped and it's out when it's active. So here, rather than dummy press the button and realize the light went out, and then the light came back on. He sees the light on, thinks that the light that, that it's in a trip condition, and he's sitting here doing this. Why won't it reset? Oh, it must be defective. Doesn't think to plug something in to see if it actually has power. Just used his own limited knowledge of the GFCIs on the market because the brand that he carried had a red light that activated when it was tripped. So I ended up with a spare because he handed me this defective one back. So I put it to use and put it in this uh, box here. And I say I use this in my uh, in my workshop here plug for plugging things like my compressor and stuff in. So anyway, that's a little history on that. Let's uh, take a look at how this thing works. In this first experiment, we're going to use a 22K resistor and show that it trips. That's 22K between hot and neutral, nothing between hot and ground, and it will trip. Next, we'll use a one mega ohm resistor. Now, one mega ohm resistor is going to draw less than the six milliamps or four to six milliamps required to trip the circuit. So this time it's not going to trip. 
because the idea is to trip for a current that could cause injury but not a very light leakage which you might feel but it's not going to cause injury so the current is too low now and it won't trip we're going to try a couple of other values of resistor just to see where the cutoff is but it should be around 22 to 25k in that range uh, it should cause draw enough current to, to make it trip this time we're going to use a 100k resistor and like before 100k resistor is not going to draw enough current to trip the gfci this time we'll do it with a 47k and again like the 100 and the 1 meg there's not enough current to activate the gfci circuit you can hear the supervisors complaining and then if we go back to the 22k of course it'll trip immediately next we'll try a 33k resistor And once again, the GFCI is not going to trip. So I've taken my earth wire again, my poor earth wire, because remember before, we didn't get a lot of light out of this LED light, but it did light it up, just like that. So we know that we have a path to ground this is just a wire that's stuck into the ground by a few inches in a screwdriver. Now if I take this source and instead of plugging it into mains, I now plug it into my GFCI. It should trip. If it's operating correctly, which we've already tested with a 22K resistor, it should trip. But it doesn't. Why is this? That's because this LED draws actually less power than what would be required to trip this. But will it trip when I do this? No. Why? Because the ground is not really that good. But if I take this grounded wire, which is grounded to the outside as we saw, and I stick it directly into here, it should trip with not much more than a little bit of a spark. Not even a spark. This wire is connected directly into the ground and it trips instantly now think if your body was contacting the ground and you touched a gf a touch the live circuit protected by a gfci it would kick out that quick if i were to re replace this with a, a conventional lamp and not an led it would trip immediately as well but because the led itself is a, a relatively high impedance source it's, you're going through a diode rectifier etc the lamp itself doesn't draw that much power and it doesn't draw enough obviously to trigger oh it did that time i wonder why it didn't the first time the first time it didn't trip there see so it really all depends it's probably because the, the capacitor in here was still holding a bit of a charge and didn't require that much to, uh, to actually get it going. If I left this set for a few minutes, it will trip like it just did. It should, but because this draws such little current, it didn't. Just a, just a little short video to show let's measure while I'm doing this let's just measure how much current I'm able to draw through here to the ground fault without this tripping it'd be interesting to see I get let me get my other meter going here which has milliamp current capability so we'll just plug in the milliamp test and we can find out why it's not tripping So I'm in uh, AC milliamps. So I'm drawing 
3 milliamps AC. The reason it's not tripping is because a GFCI requires 4 to 6 milliamps of current to trip and oh that time it did because I guess the capacitor I let it sit for uh, a, a couple of minutes and the capacitor had discharged a little bit more but as you can see we're only drawing 3 milliamps of current and because we're only drawing 3 milliamps of current it's not enough to make it trip now if I were to instead of using my fake ground if I were to stick my probe directly into the uh, outlet here it will trip immediately because it's going to draw the full current of the lamp which will exceed the 3 milliamp or 4 milliamp trip point and trip it immediately but going to the relatively poor ground of a screwdriver stuck into the ground I'm only able to draw 3 milliamps of current through the lamp and thus the GFCI is not tripping. Okay, this time we'll see what the actual lamp draws. It should draw, I think, about 100 milliamps, somewhere in there. So if I go to the neutral side and then touch my lamp here, we will get, uh, what is it going to say here? 133. 133 milliamps is what this LED lamp is drawing at 60 Hertz there 60.0 Hertz 133 134 milliamps what is the uh, rating on the bulb what does it say the bulbs gonna draw uh, it says 145 milliamps 10 watts so a little bit less than what the claim is on the lamp itself but this bulb is, is quite old. I've had this one for a while. It looks like it's been through a war. This has been on my bench for a couple of years and it gets a fair bit of use. So anyway, that's uh, just my little experiment today with a GFCI. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.